Hello everyone and welcome back to another Dr. Ace video. Today it is round two once again here in Superbike 24, but it is going to be the Super Pole race and then race two. Yet again we start from pole position and we'll try to win once again here in Catalonia. Ladies and gentlemen, let battle commence. It's a Super Pole race. So here we go then, from the aforementioned position, we'll wait for the red lights to disappear, and away we go. We've got an eight lap sprint here, Super Bowl race underway, and our determination knows no bounds to try and win once again. So into the first corner then, we've lost a bit of positions here compared to what we did in race one in yesterday's video, and now we are four positions away from the leaders, but do not panic, do not fear. I have absolutely every confidence that we can catch not only up to Bulliga, but pass him as well. And to be honest, he's barely ahead of us, really. It's half a second. We've not really lost any time, although we have run it deep there into Turn 4. Bit of time lost there going into the right-hander of Turn 4. And now into the Repsol corner for Turn 5. We might be able to actually sneak around Jonathan Ray the long way around. Look at him trying to position the Yamaha in front of us to deny us that opportunity. The Yamaha is in the inside line. I might not be able to. I'm going to try and brave it. Jonathan Ray's a good, clean rider. Does allow me to get back on through. Now into the right hand and then down, shifting to second. A little bit prematurely there that time around. Jonathan's still in range. But the AI do tend to struggle going into the breaking point here for turn 10. Even top rack then had the knee sort of trembling as he went into Lakaisha corner. Now, one thing I will mention, in case you missed it, or if I haven't mentioned it already, this is the hardest difficulty in the game. It's 120% artificial intelligence difficulty. So, they are at their maximum. Yes, that's right, Top Rack, I'm talking to you. You are at your maximum difficulty right now, but they do tend to go a little bit slow. At str oh, my lord, look at Bulaga picking it up. They do tend to go a little bit slow upon this straight here. I think usually it's because they make that mistake hitting the apex on the final corner. And now with the four riders here, look at the two BMW teammates against the two Ducatis. Only one rider can finish on top, and coincidentally, it is the number one who has gone to the front. So that's a two-position game already from the start-finish straight to the first corner. And now it's pretty much a chance for us to go through. I'm reducing the fuel here. I don't think I need to do it in the Super Bowl session, but... It just looks a little bit concerning that the fuel was dropping so much. And of course, uh, being a power selling 2 does keep it a little bit more interesting rather than me just disappearing to the front with power selling 3. Once again, we try that outside line. Is it going to work this time? I think it will. Of course, a little bit upon the curve there, so we did lose a bit of time on the entry to turn 6. Now into turn 7 for the TB3. Quick change of direction here, and that puts us in a good spot to close in in the Campsa corner. Oh, that's a beautiful tight apex. I think we're going to be able to get through here for turn 10. Can we do it? It's a bit late to go back from there. And Alvaro might open the door if he runs it a little bit wide. I think this is it. Oh, we're picking up the acceleration wonderfully with power setting 2. He's going to run it a little bit deep for the bank, Samadel. That gives us an opportunity. Just touching the corner has just cost us a little bit of time. Had to pick up the motorcycle to avoid crashing. Now onto the power and into the right-hander. This could be the rehearsal for an overtake into the slipstream. Even with power setting two, I think this will be enough to get uh, on, at least on par with Alvaro. And you know when he's the fastest man on track. Hard braking into turn one then. Right down, easy boot, just skipping across the tarmac. That allows us to come back into the, to the chance getting past the number one. Oh, look at how wide he went there for turn three. I mean, I went that wide in race one and ended up crashing. Still able to get back on the bike nonetheless, but still, it's easy to drop the front into turn three. Now into turn four. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the way the door opened. Thank you, Alvaro. I can't thank you enough, but I do feel he might go back at the end. I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. I panicked. I actually just Im just braced it, like when I got ran over many years ago, I just braced the impact and bounced over the bonnet. <laughs> now we're alright though, and we're right in turn, chasing down Bountista. 
Well, I've got to say, keeping it on Power Sling 2 has kept it more interesting than it did in Race 1, so I'll give it that. It looks like the rides are getting a little bit more aggressive compared to they did in Race 1. But can they stop that? They just don't want to have the turning speed, do they? He might have the inside line here. No, he doesn't. Alvaro has yielded. Now it's down to us to hammer the point to home again. We are looking at a potential five race wins out of five. I don't think that's ever been done before. What a start from your content created today. And of course, if you are enjoying the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's since it significantly helps the channel and I sincerely appreciate it. So yeah, do anything you can, hit the like or subscribe, entirely up to you. But uh, into turn one, this is the elf corner and we are pulling tents away once again. Now I'm in two minds here. Do I change to power setting three and just go for those fastest lap times? Or do we just stay on power two? I might have to start implementing power setting one in these races. Not every single race will be this easy, I can assure you. We've got some really difficult rounds coming up where the AI will go gung-ho. I look forward to seeing them. As it stands, Bulliger and Bautista are joining me on the podium. Jonathan Ray is now ahead of top rank. He might not be that far away from a podium here. Of course, Jonathan Ray only has the one podium to his Yamaha name so far. But in virtual form, he could do it in his fifth race. Let's hope he can make that come to fruition. Would be a little bit disappointed if top rank doesn't make it to the podium. A teammate, of course. But that advantage is now almost at that key vital number. One second advantage. If you've been a fan of the channel, then you probably know what I'm going to say. But if you're new around here, allow me to educate you. The rider in first place, when he can develop a lead of over a second, it breaks the resolve of the rider in second place. And I think now it is going to happen. Across the line, it's another solid lap time, a difference of one thousandth of a second. It's not the 139s we were doing for fun in race one, but it's still more than enough to secure the 12 points on offer today. 1.2 is the gap 12 row. I don't think he's going to catch us now. Now, I did mention in race one in yesterday's video, I believe it was, that if push came to shove, if the AI couldn't give me a good proper race in the Super Bowl session, then I would conjure something up for race two to keep it interesting. What I'm thinking is, is I do a long lap penalty immediately to start race two, and that way it'll put me at the back of the grid, and then from there, I'll try and chase down and attack everyone to secure the victory here in Catalonia. It's risky, I'm uh, giving up potential points there, and of course with Superbike 22, the AI, if they tap you in your mid corner, it usually results in a crash. So I am risking everything for race two to keep it interesting. Now I don't like the idea of just dominating every race. It's, it's fun for a certain point, but I do concern myself that you guys might not enjoy it as much. So that's what we're gonna do in race two. Let me know in the comments section, once you've uh, watched race two, what you thought about the action. Of course, uh, that'll be recorded after this one, so it won't take too long for me to get to that. But for now, power setting two, no problem. We're finding six tenths of a second on this exchange of lap times. Onto the power, and I think across the line this could be, or might not be. Yeah, we just missed out with the 139s, the 140.102. Look at the graphic in the bottom left hand corner of your screen, guys and girls. That is rather a large gap. That's what 2.2 seconds looks like when concerning it on a map. Ooh, really tight to the apex there. Now, bear in mind, I crashed there in race one, and in fact, it was on lap seven. So we're only one lap away of making that the same mistake again, if I'm not careful. But I don't think that's going to happen. I'm going to chuck it back into power setting three, then I think we've done enough in power setting two. Let me see if we can get back into those 39s com <coughs> comfortably, excuse me. I was choked to my own tongue there, as we now come out with the power out of turn five. Spots into six and then into the terrific TV3 corner. Left hander here. Quick change of direction. Turn eight. Yeah, we're finding three tenths of a second here. 
I think by the end of this one we are guaranteed to be in the 139s. The 138 still eludes me for now. I'm not able to get that uh, additional couple of tenths of a second. But I am confident that maybe a time trial session, maybe some longer races where I just continue to uh, churn out the lap times, I think I could eventually get into the 138. Certainly not uh, counting against it. Now into the tight apex once more for the Europe car. And then into the right-hander again. We are four tenths of a second quicker than the previous lap. Across the line, it is going to be the first 39 of today's race. And wow, I don't know what's happened there, but on the left-hand side of your screen, Jonathan Ray is in the podium positions. Oh, must have jinxed him. He was in the podium positions. He's back in the podium positions. A lot of Yamahas are in the top eight. Three Ducatis, three Yamahas, two BMWs. As if that's a, a top eight here. Of course, no Hondas and no Kawasaki's. It looks strange to see since Alex Lowe's was so good in Phillip Island. I think he had a terrible qualifying here in Catalonia. Onto the brakes and into the left hand side. Beautiful tight apex for the Repsol corner. This is wonderful. I am thoroughly enjoying my time with Superbike 22. Oh, no, no, no. Oh my god, have I just completely ruined this? There's Booliger. Oh, <laughs> I've made another mistake. Oh my god, and Booliger pushing himself through then. I, I could have sworn it was going to end in a crash. But it's not my fault, Nicolo. You're, you're looking at me. I can't believe I've just done that. Well, I'm certainly keeping myself on my toes here. I mentioned in uh, the, the race, uh, yesterday's race video that doing these in the morning when I first wake up is not a good idea and I don't think it's paid off either. Concentration is not quite there. Don't touch his rear tyre into the Europe car because I will lose the front. Now into the right-hander then. This is the penultimate lap. Pooliga somehow leads this one as I dropped four seconds for getting on the kerb in TV3. That was just sheer panic. When I touched the kerb into the TV3, I just let go because I knew it was going to result in a crash. Wow, Pooliga breaks early. Why on earth did he break so early? Oh, it almost paid off. Jonathan Ray up to third again. But Kawasaki is determined to stay within this fight for the podium. Can he get it done? The Yamaha of Jonathan Ray. I feel like I've just said Kawasaki there. But Jonathan Ray on board the Yamaha is into third place. Alvaro Bautista into fourth. Top rack's down to sixth. What's happened there to the uh, Turkish rider? My teammate, of course. Locatelli's now up to fourth. Well, this is really crucial now because this is the Super Bowl session, and if you weren't aware, the top nine finishers then take the top nine spots for race two. So Jonathan Ray will be starting in the podium positions. Top rack will be down to six. This is very interesting, and of course, it could have got so much worse a moment ago as I made that big mistake on lap seven. Coincidentally, that's two races in a row where lap seven have resulted in something bad for me. You couldn't script that. The lucky number seven for many is my unlucky number, apparently. Always used to be my lucky number as well. I used to be a big fan of St. Ellen's Rugby League, and Sean Long was always the number seven. Random topic, but I was a big fan of Sean Long. He was awesome. Anyway, into the right hand. This is the Europe car. We are now one more corner away from victory in the Super Bowl to make it five wins on the bounce. Five for five for Dr. Ace and the BMW squad. Brilliant. What another terrific race. Terrific victory for us here in Catalonia. So those are the results on screen. I'll leave them there for you now. And then we'll now progress over to race two in the final race here in Catalonia. Jonathan Ray did take third place and we'll start from the front row. So that's your Super Bowl qualifying, uh, excuse me, race two qualifying from the Super Bowl. And as you can see, Jonathan Ray on the front row. Axel Bassani down to ninths. Where is that? Yeah, there's Alex Lowe's. He's starting from 18th. That is madness. Now, don't forget, guys, we're going to be starting this race in a moment and immediately taking the long lap penalty loop. And you'll see how long that long lap penalty loop is. So here we go then. Red lights out now 
Ooh, kind of misjudged it, but here we go. So this time it's going to be 10 laps instead of the 15 of race one. And the goal is to make this one more interesting than the Super Pole and race one was. So here we go then. Onto the brakes, into the long lap penalty loop. Not bad, but look how long it is. Can't take this one at speed. I might actually come out of this one a little bit too soon. And therefore might not be at the back of the grid. Who is there? Scott Red. It's Alex Lowe's? Oh, Tito Rabat makes sense. But Alex Lowe's down to 22nd? That's ridiculous. At uh, 21st rather than 22nd. Of course, I've just swapped position with him. Oh my god, I'm wide! Oh my god. I could have missed it all then, good and proper. So I didn't take any chance in the Super Bowl. I went for the SC1 and SC0. It's pretty much what I've been running throughout the qualifying this weekend. And now, they're using the same again to try and get past Tito Rabat, all the way up to Nicola Bouliga. Jonathan Ray in second, ladies and gentlemen. Could it be back-to-back -back podiums for Jonathan? Andrea Locatelli looking for another podium as well. Now, this is when it's going to get interesting. Lap one is pretty much a write-off. We didn't secure anything, to be honest. We didn't really achieve anything, as we now go on to the brakes, into the Lakaisha corner, a little bit wide... But we have taken a position. That's one rider t done over already. As that is not going to work against Alex Lowe's. He's going to come back on the inside, trying to avoid the contact. We got through. Nice. So that's two riders we've taken already in the first lap. Now, the AI might touch the apex here on the right-hand side and then pick up the bike. They didn't. Okay, so we're not seeing what we've seen earlier in the Super Bowl. So now it's a case of us trying to use the slipstream of everyone available to get past, but I don't want to get suckered in too much, so I've got to make sure I make it stick into the brakes, and there we go. Round the outside of Norodin, round the outside of Reddin. Now we're up to 19th. Careful not to get hit here onto the left-hand side for turn two. It's status quo as it is for the rest, but we're trucking along now. Taz McKenzie ahead of us. Ika Lekawona down there in 17th. Not a good result for the man on board the Honda. Did really fancy using the Honda here for the Superbike career mode. I actually really like how it handles, but I feel like it would have been underpowered enough to keep this one fun. But onto the brakes, <laughs> around the outside of Sam Lowe's as well, potentially. Not quite. Ika Lekawona comes through again. Former Order GP rider there, giving me what for as we try and go round. And there is Garrett Gerloff. Ahead of him is BSB's 2023 Superbike, uh, 2022 Superbike Champion. Wait, 23, 22. Apologies, I got, <laughs> got a little bit lost a little bit there. Because Tommy Bride won as a 2023 BSB champion. And then onto the brakes here. I think I can get around the outside of Garrett Gerloff. Now, quick calculation here. 3.7 is the gap to Bulaga, who's leading this race. 3.6, 3.7. Oh, I'm trying to squeeze through. That's one of the Hondas we got past. And now we're behind Philip Ertl who's having the best race of his season. The man on board the Yamaha, of course. Not quite gone to plan as the, for the German, to be honest. Now out of the slipstream. We might be the fastest man on circuit. Cross the line? No, he wasn't. So we're five tenths slower than Andre Iannone, but we had a lot of overtakes there, and as we go on the brakes again... Ooh, is Ronaldo going to touch me? No, thank God. The worst thing that can happen there is if you run it too deep and try and save the position, the AI will just hit you. And if you're mid-corner, it's an instant crash. So I did not want that to happen there because if I crash here, I don't think I'll win this one. The gap to Bulaga is three seconds and we're still making short work of this 120% AI. Axel Bassani's got the inside line, but I'm quite confident that I can break and bring it in. Beautiful. The two GYR, GTR Yamahas are ahead of us. Closing in quite rapidly there in Domi Egerton. Not the Aussie there, Remy Gardner. Moto 2's former Moto, uh, Moto 2's former world champion. And now go on the power once again. This is a great spot for me. I'm able to pick up a lot of speed with the M1000RR. Slam the brakes just before that shadow and go around the long way. Oh, in fact, Egerton's not allowing me through. Tommy Egerton. Nicely done up on the brakes there, but this is really messing my chances up. And he's back on through again. <gasps> no. Good Lord Almighty, I thought that was it. 
that's exactly what I was talking about. When they do that, if they hit you and you're at full lean angle, usually it's game over. Thank goodness I wasn't at full, full lean angle. Oh, Remy Gardner's touched the apex. This is wonderful. We're going to have so much speed here with this BMW and the slipstream. Fastest lap of the race, only three tenths away from the 139s. We're now going on the brakes for the top ten positions. Oh, wait, this is happening. This is definitely game on now. Two seconds it is to the advantage to Andrea Locatelli, who's leading. Top rack's in third. Remy's opened the door. In fact, they all have. Are they just waiting me for me to come through? I'm not going to be able to get through here, but I can break at the same spot they do. And wait for the opening. Wait for it. Wait for it. Go for it. Yes, come on. Use the power on the brakes. Round the outside of Yanoni. Don't want to be anywhere near the Maniac. <laughs> That's one rider you do not want to have a fisticuffs with in Superbike. Across the inside. <laughs> Still managed to make a bit of contact with him. Ran it deep. And here he comes again. To be fair, he did actually give me quite a lot of space there, did Andrea. Fair play to the man they call the Maniac. And now on the power, we are down by two seconds. This is a spot where we can really take advantage. Look at that bravery. Oh, the temerity to not go around just one, but almost two. It's sensational. We're battling with a MotoGP Grand Prix winner, multiple and a six-time World Superbike race winner. Over a hundred victories for Jonathan Ray. Whoa! Well, I didn't think it would be Petrucci, the one who's got elbows out at this stage of race two. But it looks to be... Oh, he's touched the apex and put me through. Oh, a bit of contact. I don't think he's going to appreciate that. Apologies to Danilo Petrucci, but I'm, I have to hurry up here. I can't spend all my time waiting for them to get through. Now on the brakes, we're up to those fourth place. Oh, perhaps, um, maybe I misjudged this. It feels like I'm much closer than I thought I would be. Maybe I didn't need to force the issue on Danilo Petrucci after all. Because the gap is 1.8, and it's not necessarily the gap I'm looking at right now. It's this clear space between myself and my teammate top rank. Because the only reason we weren't doing 139s is that we were trying to get around other riders. Now with the freedom to just have clear air, there's no doubt we'll not only be in the 139s, but probably through on top rack before you can sail a Kaisha. Here is the TV3. Nice and clean into the left side, then into the right. A little bit aggressive on the power there. You see though the rear tyre slipped? Didn't slip by much, but it's just enough to make you aware that you've made him a small mistake. Now onto the power, now onto the brakes. Can't. Can I? Tight? I think we can. Cheers, Tom Rank Chum. The ultimate teammate is basically Michael Vandermark. Good lad, Top Rank. Thank you for letting me through. And now it's all curtains down. All systems go for the show. Here we go. Four tenths of a second we found. Booling's does the apex again. If he wasn't doing that so much, he'd be miles ahead. Well, this is the moment. This is the key moment. It's a low 140.1. This is it. That dreaded lap 7 is coming up, though. Keep making mistakes on lap 7 for some strange reason. And you're into turn 1. And into turn 2. We are having a great race here. If it comes down to another race this season where we dominate, I am definitely doing this again. This has been a pleasure. This has been the best race of the... Of the uh, Maybe not the season. I thought the Phillip Islands ones were absolutely terrific. I thoroughly enjoyed them. I was under pressure for the entirety of each race. This time, we've got a chance to go from first to last, back up to first. We'll have to reduce the fuel down at some point, but for now, it's full attack. Hashtag full send that I see so frequently in our Discord chats and even in the comment section down below from the channel members, specifically Potato99. But here we go on the power then. Oh, I'm stuck. Whoa! Whoa! I can't get off him! Get off me! What the hell was that? I I do apologise, Booliga, but what the hell was that with Andrea Locatelli? I could feel that straight away. It was like my controller got locked. Well, that was really weird. And then when I went on the brakes, I was leaning right, but it pushed me to the left. 
Well, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter now. Of course, I, I gave that position back. Bulga's okay. And so is Locatelli. The two Italians are going gung-ho here to make sure they can get either the victory or well, the second place. Not allowing me to just take it easy. And there it goes. 39.9. We're the fastest on the street. Who can win the Battle of the Late Breakers? We've done it. Ooh. Locker still fancies it, though. The Promethean Pata Yamaha has got that corner speed. And speaking of, here he comes. I'll tell you what, he was close then. Being able to see all sorts with the ultra wide monitor. How into turn four? Two tenths of a second is the gap. Ooh, steady. Might have to drop to power setting too soon. Our fuel is dropping down. No, 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 no. I can't believe it again. I can't believe it again. Lap seven. What's the matter with me? <laughs> Lap seven. Why? <laughs> it's happened. Race one. Race two in the Super Bowl session a moment ago. Oh, my Lord. I feel all that again. Well... You're guaranteed a bit of drama in a Dot Trace video, I guess. And now it's happening again. Ooh, I had to bring me foot in there to try and avoid getting it hit onto the side of Andrea Yanoni. But I've got to say, that was a wonderful overtake around the outside of Yanoni. He's going to come through, though, isn't he? Uh, sandwich! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Top Right, but I could not avoid Andrea Yanoni hitting me then. The contact in this game... To be honest, I, I've been saying this actually for the past couple of laps, but it hasn't happened yet. But I can assure you, I have crashed so many times in this game just for the AI leaning on me at full race pace. And that's exactly what that was going to happen. And if I didn't force the issue on through on top right then, Andre and Oni would have took me out. And I'm not prepared to allow that to happen. That was tremendously tight to that curb. Oh my god, you know he won't leave me alone. He's miffed about that lunge into turn seven earlier. I'm two seconds behind now. Has it all gone wrong on turn seven again? We've got to think about changing this fuel soon. Oh, Jonathan Ray's gone down. He's not been able to convert his start to a podium. It's power setting two for us now then. Can we still catch up to the Italian duo ahead of us? I'm still confident I can. Not a bad entrance into turn three, at uh, turn seven. Now into the right hander. This is turn nine, your Bank Sabadell corner. No, your Camps are corner, should I say. Bank Sabadell's at turn 11, which is fast approaching upon the exit of turn 10, which is Lakaisha. Here it is. 1.4 with a lap and a half to go, or two laps and a half. I think we've still got a chance here. Fuel is going back into the green. That's the first time I've gone into the Bank Sabadell without contact, without pressure. And it's paying off. It's game on, ladies and gentlemen. And you... Oh, my goodness, Locatelli just touched the apex again. Yeah, we've got absolutely every chance in the world now. Power setting three engaged. A one, 39.6 on lap 8 of 10. Oh, Bruliger was taking liberties on that curb. Here it comes. I'll tell you what, if we win this one, this is one of the best videos I've done. Just what you need to get that motivation back, that momentum to build upon after making a mistake. It's coming. Whoa, Bulliger, you are taking liberty, sunshine. Remy Gardner's gone down. Bautista's gone down. Bulliger would have gone the same way if he wasn't careful then. Now into the left. Oh, Lord Almighty. Get out of the way, Bulliger, because you are going to take me out. So this is it then. It's Bulliger who's dropping like a stone. The number 41 against the 55. Who is going to finish on top? Here in Catalonia, Locatelli looking for that first Superbike victory. We're already looking for our six. Who's it going to be on top? If this was the final lap, I've got to say, I think Locatelli would have win, would win it. I haven't got anywhere near as much confidence to go in the final corners. Here is an opportunity, but I'm not going to force it 
on this lap. We have time, we have a chance to save it for the final lap. If he touches the curb here, it's over. Oh, Locker, you didn't, you didn't listen. And now I'm gonna drive past. Look at the drive we have for this M1000RR. It's another 39. Catch me if you can. Surely not. Oh, Locker was close. Not quite tight to the apex there. Oh, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous of this, actually. Oh, my God. Not that's wide. That is wide. Locker comes through. Never mind. He's locked out. Hasn't got the right key to open this door, has he? Into turn four. A ten He's still coming, though. Fair play. The temerity to just keep on knocking at the door, even though you're locked out. Is second and on. But I think that's it. I think that's content. Uh, excuse me. I think that's curtains. The locker. The content creator wins out again. The 120% difficulty have succumbed to the domination once more. We are three corners away from victory. For the sixth race in a row, we've done it again. Oh my lord, look at that gap. But this is going to be the fastest lap, isn't it? What a commanding victory. Quick recap. We started pole. We took the long lap penalty. We let everyone through. And we forced our way through again to make a mistake and to turn seven. And then forced our way through again to take a second advantage victory over Andrea Locatelli and Nicolo Bruliger. Ladies and gentlemen, put that down in the Dr. Ace archives. Yes! It's thumbs up all around for BMW. So there you are then, guys. I sincerely hope you enjoyed that one. If you enjoyed it even half as much as I did, then I advise you to like and subscribe. But for the rest of this, I am happily to leave you now to see the damage for the championship lead. I'll leave you now with uh, the part Fermi celebrations, the championship standings, and I guess I'll see you in the next Doxter Ace video. Guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Ciao for now. Oh hi! Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.